flowcharts. Sometimes when you're doing programming, the logic becomes more difficult than you can think of straight on, and especially when you're using branching. We use flowcharts to help us understand the flow of the program better. In this program, we're going to be using flowcharts to diagram a simple greatest of three problem. The problem is that we have a, uh, well, we want to create a program where the computer will tell us the largest of three numbers. Now, they don't want to just return the number. It wants to return which box the largest number is in. So we have box A, B, and C indicated here on this diagram. And box A, B, and C, as you can see right here, A, B, and C, are, are uh, labeled. And the text box is called TXT A, TXT B, TXT C. The user will type numbers into these. And depending on which number, when you press this button down here, find largest, it's going to simply display either an A, a B, or a C in this box right here, uh, depending on which one of these boxes holds the largest number. So here's a situation where the computer must make a decision. For example, if the number 5 was here in A, 9 was in B, and 3 was in C, it would display a B, because 9 is the largest. So B holds the largest number. OK, with that idea in mind, um, we can solve this problem by using a flowchart. And a flowchart has graphical symbols, basically, that help us see the structure and the flow of the logic, how the logic is going to work. Many, many types of symbols are used. Uh, the input, standardly, is a trapezoid, as you see in this picture. The trapezoid sort of represents a, f a kind of a part of a funnel going down. Uh, a hopper is what it was thought to be. In the old days, our input was always punch cards. And you see the symbol at the bottom there. It's a punch card. And that's what we used to use. The rectangle is used to represent arithmetic statements or any type of processing you do, any type of processing. The diamond is decision. Okay, That would be the if statements. Output can be represented a lot of ways. They have a CRT symbol. I like the torn off sheet of paper. That's what that's supposed to represent, a torn off sheet of paper uh, coming out of a printer. Because it's easy for me to draw. I'm used to drawing that one. Uh, they do have a sort of a CRT shaped one with a kind of a narrow neck and going up. Some people use kind of a sort of a half circle with two lines down to represent CRT. There's a lot of different symbolization here. And finally, the, the terminators and the um, uh, connectors. The circle is the standard connector used to bring two paths together. Uh, you can't split two paths without a decision, but you can bring them together with a circle. Uh, the little uh, like home plate over there, the Pentagon, is used for an off-page connector. And some of these flowcharts get large, and you have to go on to other pages and you usually connect with those. This sort of pill shape down here at the bottom is used as a start and stop, where you start your logic, where you stop your logic. They call those terminators. We're going to start our problem with our input. Now, the way we do input in Visual Basic is we take the values out of a text box and we put them into variables. Variables are the things you always keep things in to work internally with the program. It speeds the operation of the program. It's just a better way to do it. I'm using simple A, B, and C here for the sake of logic. In an actual program, you would probably use IA, IB, and IC. And when we code it, that's the way we'll code it. But we're just simply doing the logic now to see how this thing works. You notice our input's at the top, and we have an arrow coming down showing we're going to our first logic statement. Well, when you're trying to compare three numbers, and if you're not going to use compound if statements, which I don't want you to use on this program because I want you to get used to nesting, we're going to put if statements inside of if statements. And that's what we're trying to see how to do. Nesting is a powerful tool in computing. Uh, compound if statements would take away the need for nesting in this situation, but let's not use those yet. Let's get used to nesting first. So what we're going to start with here is we look and comparing three numbers to find the largest, we first have to start with two. We're only going to do two at a time. So naturally, we'd compare A to B. And of course, in comparing A to B, uh, it can that comparison, where I put A greater than B, that may be true or that may be false. 
depending on what's in A and B. So we have two choices, and this is where we use our dual branched ifs when we get to it. All right, let's follow down the true side. <clears throat> and usually that's the way you do. You go down the true side, you back up on each step, and then do the false side. So if that is true, what do we know? We know that A contains the largest number. So now we need to compare it to C. Okay? Just that simple. We know A contains the largest. We now need to compare it to C. Once we made that comparison, we also have a true and false. If it's true, we know A is the largest. If it's false, we know B is the largest. Well, if A is the largest, let's fall down the true side again. If A is the largest, we found the largest number we, because we compared A to B and we compared it to C. In both cases, it was largest. Therefore, it must be the largest. We need to display it, print it out. So I use my little paper to show we're going to display it somehow. And the way we'll display it is we'll just simply put a letter A in the box called largest, txt largest. If we go down the false side, however, we know that C is larger than A. But we haven't compared C to B. Do we have to compare C to B? No, we don't. Here's the reasoning. In math, you've probably heard this a number of times, and don't panic on me. This isn't deep math, all right? If A is greater than B and C is greater than A, then C must also be greater than B. That's called the transitive property, folks. It's real simple logic, all right? So going back through, even though we haven't compared C directly to B, we compared it indirectly by comparing it to A. So therefore, we know C is the largest at this point, and we want to display C. And so I represent that in that fashion. All right, let's go back up. Going back up to our first box again, or our first diamond there, we're doing a comparison of A greater than B. Now let's say A didn't win. B won. B was the greatest. So now we're going down the false side. We know B is greater than A. we got to compare it to C next. So there's another if statement. Again, in this comparison, we have a true or false. Is B greater than C? Well, if it is, we know it's greater than A since we compared both of them. We simply want to print out the B. What if it isn't? Well, if it isn't, we know C is the greater of the two, B and C. And again, we don't need to check it against A because indirectly, by transitive, we already have. So we know C is the largest at this point. We may print out C. Now, to make our, our whole flow chart complete, uh, we need to just put a few terminators on there and a few connectors. And you can see how we have things connected up to all flow down to one flow. And we have a start. I'm now going through how we're going to take this flow chart and write our code directly from it. In writing the code, it's fairly easy. Each one of those boxes sort of represents some statements, one statement or a few statements. And if you just follow a few simple rules, number one, go down and include each logical structure. For example, include the input, include that, include the output, include all the decisions. Okay. And when you write a statement, make the whole structure. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. We're going to start our code from the start. We start from the top and go down. And the way it's going to work is we're going to emphasize each part by making it bigger to show you what we're working on. This code is going to go behind the button called Find Largest. You'll see uh, when I do the demo at the end of this, the Find Largest button. OK, so let's begin. Input. There it is. We're simply going to input A, B, and C. That means we're going to take the text box txta.text and we're going to put it into IA, our variable. So we're going to input the items A, B, and C. We're going to get them from someplace on our form and put them someplace where we can use them. And you can see down here at the bottom, those are the ones. Now let's see. Coming up to the top here, notice I've got IA, IB, IC at the top. There's our input yet. But now we're coming down to the if then else. And we're working on this block right here, the one that they just enlarged, A greater than B. That creates an if statement. And since it's a dual branch, a branch out to each side, true and false, it's going to create an if then else statement. If you notice over here, we have an if then else statement that it created. 
you make the whole form. You make the if part of it, you make the else part of it, you make the end part of it. Notice I left a line of space in each one. The idea by making the whole structure is you won't get confused with all the end ifs that can end up, and there can be quite a few of them. Okay? Notice how I wrote this. A greater than B, if IA greater than IB, then. Just that simple. Okay, now if it's true, what do we have hanging off the true branch of that particular statement? Well, we've got a whole other if statement hanging off there. See? A greater than C. So what I'm going to do is right inside that if statement we already have, inside the if part of it, the top part of it, because it's the true part, I'm going to put an entire structure in this statement. Notice I have if I A greater than I C then, just like in my flowchart diagram. The whole if statement is contained within that whole part. Okay? Let's go see what else happens now. Now, if we go and we continue down the left side usually first, we're going to look at this one. See, A, we're printing out A. And how did we do that? Well, I said we were going to take and put an A in the text box called largest, txt largest.txt, just like that. You see, there's the statement that does our output for us. And it's contained within that if statement, which is, by the way, contained within the other if statement. And we do the same thing for the other side. The C, we're going to display it by using a text largest equals C. And it's the letter C we're printing out, not what's in the variables. Okay. All right, we're going to go back and do the other side now. What happens when we are on the right side, the false? Well, notice the false part of it, of the A greater than B, contains an entire if statement right there. You see that? And we're going to code it just like we had the other one. But this time, the entire thing goes in the else part of our if statement, our, our major if. This is what we call nesting, by putting statements within statements that are of the same type. We're nesting if statements here. OK. Again, the output's very similar. If it's true, B is going to be the winner. Therefore. Large B gets the text. Okay. If C is the winner, then the else part of that statement, largest dot text equals C. Okay. Now, Okay, as you can see in this program, we have box A, B, C, and largest here, and find largest. Well, let's look at the code. I've already got the code written for us right here, and I've just simply uh, typed it in ahead of time. Let's take a look at what it looks like here. All right, so I'm going to start it. Give it a second to start up. And it went off screen, so I'll bring it back on here where so you can see it. There we go. I'm going to type 1 and then hit the tab key 2 and 3 and push it. And of course, that's C. Now, if I change this to a 10 by just simply typing a 0 and push it, there it's A is the largest. Let's see, put a 0 in here. Yep, B is the largest now. That's 20 in there, a 10, and a 3. So you see my, my program, and if I did it the other direction, I would test all the paths in it, and that's something you should do. Uh, for example, if I make this a 1, uh, this a 2, and this a 3, and push it, I should get A as the largest, and I'm going to put a 0 over here, and push it, and that makes C, and then put a 0 right there and push it, I get B. Now I've tested all possible paths in that program. If you think through it logically, you'll see that little exercise actually tested one of the paths twice, but that's all right.